you're always selling. You're selling yourself every day into a job, on a date, you're selling. Welcome back everybody. I'm delighted to introduce Rana Cordai. Hello Rana. Hello, you got my last name wrong, uh, right. Well, is that unusual? It right. Yeah, it's very unusual and people have to always ask me, how do you say it? Oh, okay. I, I, find it, I find it easy. Hey, um, I, I've invited Rana. Um, she's a new member of the Sales Masterminds uh, uh, APAC here in uh, our region. Uh, and she's absolutely brilliant. I mean, if you get on to LinkedIn oh, and social media, you'll see the impact she has. It's just amazing. So I wanted to actually share some of your topics and your experience with, uh, with my audience. Okay. Uh, and and we'll, so we'll do a series of, of discussions. In this first one, I, really, I know you do a lot of work working with people that aren't salespeople but need to sell. Yeah. Tell me about that. So... I'm pretty passionate about teaching non-sales people how to sell because I see often, and you've probably heard me say this, there's a lot of amazing people in jobs, technically brilliant people who have to sell. They are either having to make cold calls. I've seen in employment services where people help uh, people with disabilities into work having to make hundreds of cold calls. I've seen people in financial services who have to go out there and network, who have an engineering mind. And many times they have anxiety. I've even seen people that go to a psychologist because they have to make, pick up that phone. And 99% of the time they've never had training in sales. Right. So I saw the gap and I took the opportunity. And yeah, so that's just a little bit about why. It, what I find in that environment is, is a lot of people that have never been in sales have a, a perception about sales that's quite wrong. Yeah. Uh, they think salespeople have got to be vibrant and talk a lot, and, oh. uh, and it's just the opposite. In fact, a lot of those people have the attributes for good selling. Like they, they are slightly introverted versus extroverted. That, I think, is an attribute for good sales. They tend to be more humble. They tend to have better EQ, mm. are better listeners. And yet when they're told they've got to go and sell, they start saying, oh, I've got to talk. And that's my experience as well. I used to sell timeshares in Mexico. And that was probably... Wow. Yeah, so I used to sell time shows. We had to close people in 90 minutes. And I, I used to shadow different people. And one of the, the top closers, and his name was getting called out every single day. He was very quiet. He was from Germany, very introverted guy. And the other guy who was not selling, he didn't... He just spoke and spoke and spoke and didn't build that rapport, or get to know them or try and help them. So you're right. It is, from my experience, introverts... And so, and so most of these people yeah. that tend to have that, that you know, as an engineer or a finance person, yeah. they're quieter people, not always, but, yeah. but they shouldn't be afraid of that. But I'm sure you, how do you go about helping them get less stressed about selling? So for me, I come in as you're always selling. You're selling yourself every day into a job, on a date, you're selling. Now it's either you want to embrace the fact that you are selling or you want to reject that. And and I also show them, okay, when you are selling, you're helping somebody. Yeah. Do you believe in what you're, do you believe in what, so for example, in disability employment, you're helping someone with a disability into work. Do you believe that these people deserve a chance to, to get into work? Yes. So do you, are you more afraid of being rejected or helping somebody get a job? And I really try and create, what is the impact you're making? And the more we have that conversation through their blueprint, through the strategy, what the impact they're making, the more they start to... Uh, so, for example, last week I had some, a manager call me and said, my staff member, Katie, she's loving cold calling. And this is a, someone that hated cold calling. She didn't want to do cold calling. But it was because I was working on the impact she's making hmm. and working on the mindset as well. It wasn't just, oh, this is how you make the cold call. This, of course, I gave her the script, the strategy, but I didn't make it like... The, the cold call is if you get rejected. Like I taught her that, you, yeah, of course you're going to get rejected. Embrace rejection. Mm. You, you're going to get rejected. Use it as your chance to practice. So, I mean, yeah, it is difficult. But I think non-sales people need to learn how to sell. You look at most uh, startups uh, and a lot of smaller companies, it's uh, the owner and the CEO and maybe one or two other executives that do most of the selling anyway. Oh, uh, and yeah. then, then they hire salespeople and wonder why the salespeople aren't selling when they can sell, but the salespeople are the guys that theoretically know how to sell. Uh, and more often than not, 
they've always yeah. sold very effectively, but yeah. they, they haven't been able to understand why they're selling and it's typically because they have got a good EQ, they have got this ability to listen yeah. uh, and, and they are there with passion but they're there with passion with their customers and so on, not about their product so much sometimes. Uh, and so they're, they're very successful mm. uh, and, and you bring salespeople. And I've worked with a lot of organisations where they hit that ceiling, particularly in startups, and they yeah. get up to five or six salespeople and they're not they're getting not the product, sales productivity they were yeah. getting when they had when they were a CEO and one assistant. Yeah, and that, that's another thing. I've seen businesses go bankrupt. I've seen jobs lost because of bad salespeople. And this is another reason why I totally believe in teaching people sales skills because it's not even the customer that you're helping. It's also you're helping your colleagues. You're helping people that are about to. Because what happens when we're not selling? What happens? Jobs get cut, and this is the impact. So I look at it not. I look at it like holistically. And I, there's a story. There was a guy who, on my Facebook who wrote a suicide note last week, and for a month he was writing about how he's not selling. And he used to come on my Facebook lives and start typing how he's scared of sales because I did Facebook lives on selling and I tried mm -hmm. to help him but I didn't take it so seriously because he was always kind of ranting I didn't and then he uh, tried to kill himself and he said I can't do this anymore my business is failing I'm not like doing well because he's not selling he had no idea about selling and that's just a small st of course you know it's not because he's not selling he's got mental health uh, issues yeah. but that's a trigger so yeah. It's a, yeah, it makes a huge impact, teaching non sales people how to sell. And, and once they do realise it's about helping customers, it's yeah. about knowing how to ask the sort of questions they understand anyway, and they've all got insight, that they, they've all got expertise, yeah. in, from a financial expertise, engineering, whatever it is, and therefore they, that, I keep talking about that domain expertise is critical in sales. Yeah. If you haven't got it, you can't sell. They've all got it. Yeah. It's just a matter of them understanding it's about the conversation. It's about the conversation. Yeah, and that's the thing. When I tell them, you know, you don't have to talk more than 20%. You just have to ask questions and you don't need to pitch. And they love that. That's what gets them as well. Mm. It's that you are helping somebody. Because exactly. they never had that. They always thought the, the gift of the gab salesperson, I need to talk, I need to be selling. And when they find that out, it's a whole different world to them. The biggest challenge I have is, is in a lot of organisations is, is dealing with the gift of the gab salespeople. They're not salespeople. No. Okay. No. They may have been successful in the yeah. past in this modern era, era. Customers don't buy from those people anymore. Customers buy from people that create value for them through the conversation. Exactly. That's so true. I really love this subject because you're right. There's so many people out there that do sell and have to sell in their roles that have never been trained as salespeople. Uh, and and it, they do need training, yeah. but they also do need to recognise it, it's, it's selling is not what they probably think it is. It's not yeah. the gift of the gab type thing. So thank you very much for sharing that. Really loved our first session. Look forward to the next time. Thank you, John.